I'm ready to rock and fucking roll, baby. I don't see a better time to start it besides someone potentially being incarcerated with these sirens going off in the background. You get a few sirens around here. Hey? You get a few sirens around here. You're in the hood. You're in the Albany Highway, mate. Yeah. Now, you do see some um, gremlins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of homeless fucking... I fucking... Not I love the homeless. I really love them, guys. Um, anyway, it's not even it's not even all homeless people, bro. It's literally just <clears throat> just people just on the drink, bro. <laughs> on the drink on a Monday during the day, roaming the streets out here. Yeah, they're definitely homeless. Yeah, you love it. But um, welcome back, everyone. It's a beautiful Monday in Perth for us. The weather we so fun, it's funny. Beautiful weather today. Literally. Saturday, Friday and Saturday was just like the two worst days of weather we've had in the whole of September. That's true. And they couldn't have come to worst. <laughs> yeah, like genuinely. It couldn't have come. I remember last, early last week, I just sit, sat on the couch and we look at the weather forecast on the TV and I go, yeah, fucking standard. It could have been worse. It could have been Friday on Saturday, like Friday's weather where it was pissing rain the whole day. Could that have been, been worse, fucked. but absolutely standard. Literally, 1st of September, it shifted. The universe went, oh... It's the 1st of September. Oh, it's spring. Let me give you beautiful weather. Yeah. It was fantastic. We've been absolutely blessed. And then, yeah, for the two, or one really important day, fuck me, quite miserable. It wasn't, it was bipolar, I should say. Yeah. Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. Um, but right now, on this Monday, I actually feel pretty good. No, I feel great. I actually feel refreshed. It's funny. I was saying to you before. The day after a bit of a miserable um, a hungover day. Yeah, well, I wasn't really hungover yesterday. It was the, that the Saturday night was the worst. But like after you've had a fucking your body's felt really awful, whether it's a sickness, a hangover, whatever the fuck, the day you feel good, you feel like a million bucks, bro. Mm, yeah. Um, Can you quickly just before we get into it, give us a review of the black current and yuzu? Yeah, it's the V's new flavor. It's it's good. I, you know what? You, I, taste it. you know what I love. I'm alright. Thank you. You know what I love? I love the the V cans. I don't think there's a better can. There's not a lot of caffeine in these, which is why it's no. good. Because I'm trying to come off my pre workout. Good boy. And this is 78 grams yeah, milligrams all. of caffeine, which my pre workout has 500. So yeah. Um, for context, this will be my caffeine for the day. You just had a sip. Tell me what you tasted. Tastes like like black currant. Like, yeah. You said yeah. black currant's your flavor. I like black current. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, anyway, this pod, we're pretty much just going to recap the AFL grand final day plus listen out. And I don't, I don't know if you've got any other things, but yeah. other than that, that's pretty much the main two things that were right now, the world right now. I've got one of the worst mainstream things to happen to any person. It's a, it's a, it's a lip pimple. I can see it. it but hurts, I didn't say bro. anything. Yeah. I say it, mate. It fucking hurts. And there's no point of popping them. Because it only makes it worse because pimples can spread, obviously. But there's so many like, there's so many nerves in your lip. I saw a TikTok on why lip pimples are like some of the worst. You start looking it up and shit because I, I do. I'd seen it before. This is the thing because they're just a common occurrence for people, unfortunately. Well, my, so yours is like for anyone who's on audio, just it's on it's like an inch in from the corner of your lip. Whenever I get like pimples, they go right in the crevice, uh, and it's the most excruciating pimple spot in the fucking world. Because every time you open your mouth. It stretches. It stretches that le- like, oh, bro, yeah. it's fucked. I don't really get them there. I will literally get it in that one spot. It's never mm. on this side. And the inside <laughs> of my nose too. That's where I get yeah. it, like right on the inside of my nose and the lip, which is why. I'd, not even kidding. Sugar and eating too much sugar and shit. The getting a pimple on my lip and the inside of my nose is like a top three reason as to why I don't eat a lot of sugar. Yeah. Compared to what I used to because I can't deal with the fucking pain, bro. It's so inconveniently painful. Yeah. I mean, I used to have bad acne growing up um, and that was literally just genetic, bro. And even at this point, it is just genetic. I eat pretty fucking well. Um, But yeah, anytime I do get one these days, it's usually in those really shit spots. Mm. Um, And yeah, boy, oh boy, it's it's not fun, is it? Nah, it's It's not fun. I'm doing everything, just trying to dry the fucker out. And it always comes out of nowhere. It's not a slow burn. It's a last night or yesterday I wake up. Oh, there it is. Perfect. To be fair, glad it wasn't on Listen Out Day. That's a fucking good point. If it was listening out day, you got to pop it at that point, bro. Like, like right now, I don't really, like, who gives a fuck? Yeah, bro? yeah, no. Well, you can't really notice unless I'm looking at your face like I am. 
Yeah. But like, if you're just from a distance, you're not going to see it. It's not that big. It's not like a fucking bunta bunta no, one. No, um, but we should get into it. Last week, I think we both predicted Sydney to win the grand final. Not out of like, I think I think I so I'm if I can get my words correct, I believe I said my head is telling me Sydney, but your like heart on paper. Brisbane. But my no, my heart thinks Brisbane is going to just got that dog in them. So it was kind of like. I didn't really. We didn't really give a proper prediction, but we yeah. did think Sydney would get it done just based off of them being the better team all year. But Brisbane just had that dog in them, bro. And Sydney, I think it showed that um, they had a really poor end to the standard season. Mm. Disregard finals. They got lucky in their first final to beat GWS because they should have been put away early. Yeah, should have been gone. And then they versed an average Port Adelaide side at home where they just took care of them without much of a challenge. Yeah. And playing two games in a month of footy, they versed the Lions side who were just, they were, they were the big dogs, bro, like you just said. They had that dog in them, bro. I, there was part of me, it. after like losing last year, I just felt like Brisbane just, something about, you just can't lose back-to-back grand finals. They, no. There can't be too many sides who have lost back-to-backs. I mean, I reckon what's just happened to Sydney is the equivalent of a back-to-back. Because sort of. it's basically their whole team there who lost the last one. Yeah. Um, and fuck, it's 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 two out of three, bro. It's not much better. Well, Longmire is he's on the he's um, on the one and four, bro. Mm. He's lo- he one in four, one and four in grand finals, and the only one he won came into an absolute god squad in twenty twelve with Sydney. Yeah. So like, basically, they would have won that regardless. Yeah, it's um, it's it's a tough tough sight. For the supporters of the Swans, fuck the fucking. That's dogs. what I say. Go fuck yourself because <laughs> yeah. at least you're getting there. You've won a few. You've won enough flags. Yeah. Fucking West Coast and Sydney have had their battles too. So you know what, you guys. It's not like you're a, a fucking crying for some success. Like, but this is the thing when um when everyone said who do you think's gonna win? Oh, sorry. Who are you? Who are you going for in the JF? I couldn't really give an answer because I was like, I don't really care. I just want a good game. But then the day came and Brisbane really got on top. And I remember all of us here were like, we don't really know who we're going for. And then I think Sakamano said it. And then he goes, I think we're going for Brisbane because every time Brisbane score a goal, we celebrate. No, nah, it wasn't even that. I remember it vividly. It was, that was part, it was, I remember the first decision that was like a 50 50 call that went against Brisbane. The whole table was like, yeah, fuck oh, off. fuck off. That is <laughs> fucking bullshit. Yeah. And that's it, instant, a 50 50 call. Like, if you, were, if you were going for Sydney, you'd just be like, yeah. great call, ump. Um, that was when I was like, yeah, we're all going for Brisbane. But yeah. then, yeah, obviously the goals and shit were celebrating. But yeah. I mean, fun. yeah, very, very happy to see big lucky Neil win one. Um, obviously Fags as well Fags man That Kitty, guy Kitty Patootie bro Yeah he just fucking He reminds me of like He's a flower bro Like Just the best granddad Someone could have you That's know? what I oh, Who was that? I said it midweek I said He looks like a type of like Grandfather who would just give you Like a nice hug on him When you're having oh, a bad yeah. day Yeah And like bring you like A hot cup of chocolate Like hot chocolate or something But he'd give you such He would give you such wisdom uh, no, I reckon he'd just listen. I reckon he'd just be like, yeah, yeah mate. Like, he would have no idea what I'm talking Oh, bro, <laughs> the chicks these days, grand pops, man. They're just, they're just not loyal. Bro. And no, then, but he'd spit you with some some little bit of wisdom that'll just make you feel better, you know? And he'd get you laughing, I reckon. He'd probably just use something that's, like, irrelevant to the, the yeah. situation. He'd just You're be like, like oh. yeah, look, mate, you have good and bad days and yeah. there's ups and downs. But on the ups, these are the moments that make the ups yeah. feel so good. And you're just like, you know what? I'm you're so up. right. And he gives you a yeah. hug and a hot chocolate and you're like, ah. You're the fucking guy. Like bro. he's never cold. Like I feel like he would never be cold. He's, he's always warm. warm. Yeah. Warm, warm man. Couldn't be happier for him. Um, and I wonder if that really, I wonder if that really gives them the confidence now to go on and try win one or two more whilst they still, because a core of their group is actually like, They've got some older players there. Like, Lucky yeah. Neil's like young. Zorka is like 35, 36. Here's the problem though, Danaher bro. could retire. They've got great young players. There. Another Ashcroft is going in there. Another pick fucking one father's son. They are. But they've got, you know, um, young promising players. You get, um, what's the what's the word? Inconsistency at times. So it'd be interesting to see. Um, I used to hate Brisbane, but now I don't really hate them anymore. This is the thing. They were a very cocky team for not oh. winning a lot. Oh, we've got a right there, Dylan. Yeah, like I was saying, Brisbane, they were 
quite a cocky team. However, I don't know if it was because the margin at which they were winning the game, but they just weren't cocky at all, bro. They really, it was a humble victory and they're like, yeah, we fucking deserve that. Um, let's shake your hand. Yeah. Talk I mean, I've always like kind of liked Brisbane. I just feel like, I don't know. They got likable players, Neil. Zorko's a bit of a flog sometimes, but yeah, you get, you know, give him his press. Let's, uh, let's, let's talk about the day though. Um, Cause it was a highly anticipated day. You th- hosted, your I, parents not here. I think it was too highly anticipated, bro. We well, put some, too much expectation. The, I'd say the one, the one fault in all of us boys is setting really high expectations for big days and big events. Although sometimes we exceed them. No, that's the thing. Bali, I had such high expectations. We yeah. just, we still just over, just blew straight through them. You know, prior festivals we exceeded them. Yeah. So, I'd like to, I'd like for a third party to analyze our day and to see where it went wrong. Because uh, I, maybe I, if the grand final was a bit closer and it was a bit more of a blockbuster, does that play a role? I'm not sure. Yeah. If if the if it was. 27 degrees, pure sunniness. Does that play a role? I don't know. But anyway, there was what? Seven, eight of us here? Seven of us. Seven of the boys, six of us went out. Um, the day started at 11 for me. And Rambo showed up at 11. Actually showed up at like 10.40. Yeah. I just got out the shower. I said, make yourself a home, mate. Yeah, so then you boys got here around 11.30ish, I think, is when Katy Perry started, which uh, we can dive into because... In my opinion, Katy Perry was fucking... She was it was a lead. I don't know if it's the best ever. It's probably recency bias, but it was very, very good. It was very up there. Um, yeah, she was fantastic. Played played her bangers and she just showed why she's a fantastic performer. Yeah, she she born for that shit, bro. 20 years, fucking owned the... The fact that people underestimate this, making the MCG space as a performer look small is hard to do like well, yeah. if you think about for example like even, i was just thinking as to why it was such a good spectacle on tv bro when robbie williams and st- they just parked up in the middle and sung there wasn't anything else going on bro this this chick katie was fucking driving around in a car hovering around driving around the stadium bro yeah like and then yeah it's just like a big production it makes the whole mcg feel being used as opposed to just a fucking square in the middle which is why i feel like it was so good on tv to watch yeah it was it was very good um i'd be interested to see how many worldwide people who weren't interested in the grand final but just to watch katie perry tuned in hey yeah no, obviously i know got, it got uploaded to youtube her performance she's got tens of millions of followers bro on instagram mm. um so, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how many of her diehard fans, because she'd have those people, Fuck yeah. diehard fans, who are just like, what's AFL? <laughs> yeah. I want to watch Katie sing. So, it'd be interesting. I think she absolutely delivered. Absolutely delivered. Don't care. She played one or two of her random songs. She fucking smashed the ones that we knew. The random songs that she did, she just only did for like a minute. Yeah. It, it was a real, it was a real, it was a real p- performance. Like, the big song she played for good th- two, three minutes other songs should just play for like the chorus and move it on, which I liked. This is the thing now though. The AFL has set a very, very high benchmark now. If they're willing to spend five million bucks, you can get anyone, bro. Exactly. You cannot go and give us a fucking lower level Australian artist now. Bro, we need, we, actually, we need to talk about this. What? So I, I've spoken to a few people, less diehard fans... At work, for example, and 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 they'll say, "Oh, um, I think like what it should be an Australian artist." Fuck off! And obviously, like you go on Facebook comments, and there's a lot of old boomers who say, "Oh, why are we paying international artists? We we need to be paying, putting that money into like local Australians." And I say, "Firstly, why?" And I'll, I'll give you the reason as to why you're fucking wrong in the first place from a marketing point, bro. The AFL is trying to grow the game. They want Katy Perry's diehard fans to come fucking watch her perform and then go, oh, I might just watch the start of this game. Unfortunately, you got a fucking poor display. But you watch a great game, you go, fuck, AFL's fucking lit. Mm. I want to watch. That's the whole point. It's marketing, firstly, which is why their five million bucks is worth it to Katy Perry. Otherwise, if you're paying a fucking... Bro, you go get the local band. No offense to like... 
for example, you're not paying them five million bucks, mate. You're giving them ten k. They're probably a lot of Australian ass would do it for free, bro. Yeah, that's what I like. You're not paying G Flip five mil. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you ain't bringing the fans. Um, it's, it's the biggest. It's the biggest sporting event in Australia. Yeah. Like you need to get the best. Yeah, I just yeah. That, it's a dumb argument, but I just don't understand it. I'm so intrigued to see who they get next year now. Yeah. Because yeah. it cannot be shit. It has to be like these pop stars. I feel like, like it, like a Dua Lipa. Or a fucking Ariana Grande. But this is the thing. If you can get Katy Perry, yeah. Fucking a lot of people would say yes, bro. $5 million for 20 minutes, bro. Who would you? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Realistically, who's saying no to that? No, I don't think anyone is. If you've got, if you've got a, a, a singer who's potentially touring Asia, Australia around that time mm. and who has that free section off. Or if you've got an artist who's just not touring. Yeah. And has that free time? Fuck, who's not doing a twenty-four hour flight to Australia for five million dollars for twenty minutes, bro? Well, that and it's also it's actually very good for the artist, yeah, because it's exposure. Well, it's like you said, the biggest sporting event. I don't know how many people watch the grand final concurrent, but say like five million people are watching the grand final concurrently in Australia. Now that the game is an, a primarily Australian audience, so if you're an American artist like Dua Lipa and you want to captivate the entire Australian market, that's your fucking in. Five million bucks, five million people are going to be watching you, all Australians. So it's like your fucking demographic is literally there. So it's a no-brainer to me. And if you're willing to pay five million bucks, you can get anyone because I don't know how much they've paid in in the past. Five million bucks seems fucking insane to me. By the way, yeah, million like, song. <laughs> like that's fucking, that's a lot, bro. It's crazy. Um, to finish on that note, who who would you want to see? Who's not that unrealistic, but on that level and paying that much? Who would you want to see next year? I think Dua Lipa would be elite. I think I'm trying to think of like other. They have to be the uplifty pop artists that have songs that everyone knows so all the middle-aged women like they love to it i feel like she's a no-brainer to me lady gaga lady gaga would be good she would fucking put on a show bro and like oh she'd dress up and shit i reckon it'd be insane yeah any of those any of those pop star divas that have like Just ariana like, grande would be good the Rih- weekend rihanna in her prime yeah rihanna the weekend yeah, any of those really just give us a fucking show hey yeah. Give us a fucking show. We're, I reckon it'd be sick. We're past we're past the average Australian singers who are singing. We don't need a G flip. We need you need mega pop stars. It's the biggest sporting s- stage in Australia. Like put a fucking mega pop star on there, bruv. Yeah. Um but to move on, there was a clear emphasis on not getting too intoxicated in the first half of being at your house because it was a long day. We'd already pretty much established we're going to get there for four-ish because that's where we want to see X artist, X artist, X artist. Um, So plan your drinking around that. Plan the consumption around that. Um, And I I actually, I was actually pretty good. Hey, I I managed it quite well. Started to try and pick it up a little bit later, but I was no, I was probably the least buzzed I've been for the last years of festivals going into a festival, hey. Not me, I was fucked. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. You were... I know you, you, you play, I mean, you played multiple, multiple games of Pong. You'd already played three by the, by the time I got there. Yeah, um, we had 83 drinks, bro. I was just fucking... Yeah, yeah, we polished through some shit. No, I felt good like when I got to the festival. Though. I was like at a good level, but I was fucking... Yeah, I mean, we had 83 drinks. Shouts to Rams. He bought... For, or Rambo, he bought... Um, we had like 30 hard solos, fucking cruises. The sugar-free seltzers. The seltzers. For clutch. Um... Yeah, we had, and we actually did finish them. We did. So that's a fair effort between seven of us. Yeah. Well, that's a fucking average of like 12 drinks each. Played a beer pong tourney. We spun the wheel midweek to see who was going to partner up with whom. You, um, you won and you were by yourself. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like we said when we were spinning the wheel, when you're playing beer pong, playing alone, <coughs> you're at an extremely high advantage as opposed to playing in a duo. Besides the amount you have to drink. Yeah. But other than that, like you basically, you get time to correct your first shot. Like if you overthrow the first one, oh, all right, Straight you can slightly adjust the second shot. But if you're playing with a partner, you don't get that 
opportunity. If you miss, you miss. Um, like that was almost not really a shot. Besides, besides the one game I played against Zach and Sacramento, where I literally couldn't hit a cup for the whole game. Yeah. Um, there wasn't really a turn where I wouldn't sink at least a cup. Yeah. Like I'd miss one, get one. Miss one, get one, or get both in, both in the same cup because you just throw in the exact same action. So it is a bit of a cheat code, but yeah, I did come out on top. Rambo was chirping me all week, fucking, oh, Evan sucks at Pong now. I'm like, you are a fucking lying little bastard, mate. Yeah. Because don't know where he got the idea that I suck at Pong from, but I smoked him about five, six times for the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fuck, what was I going to say? I was going to say something in regards to that. Oh, yeah. Uh, we played a game of Stat Cup as well. And one thing I'd like to reintroduce is the Death Cup. Because yeah. there's, there's not enough on the line. Um, and there's less urgency just naturally when you don't add a death cup. And especially these days when we all pretty much drink the same. No one's drinking beer, bro. Yeah, the only reason we didn't do it is because we are fucked. Of course. Um, but I think there's just more on the line. And it's more fun. Like back in the day, bro, when I was fucking drinking um, bourbon, some uh, D- Sakamana's drinking beer. Jared's got like fucking Summers being shit. Nah. And then like um, people are drinking vodka mixes. Like that's cooked. Yeah, it's fucked. That's disgusting. But when we're all basically drinking spirit mixes, like, pfft, you're just basically drinking a fruity drink, mate. Yeah, it's just a big cup. I just a been, big but. cup. So it would have been fine. Um, but yeah, we played quite a few games, watched the GF, and then we said goodbye to Sakamano, who didn't go out. Um, lucky pass. Lucky pass, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we we made our journey to the festival. Uh, that, I feel like it kind of flew by, to be honest. That little ride? Yeah, I think, in theory, having a grand final as a prize is a great thing. But I actually think it ruins the vibe, genuinely. Because, yeah. well, you know, I mean, if the grand final was close, like you said, maybe you'd be a bit more up and about. But the game was dead. But we were listening to the commentary of the fucking football. You don't have music playing. You're not up So you're down. not getting up fucking beat to the music. Yeah. You're not fucking singing. You're not turning up. And then the game ends, you go... The Uber ride has fucking music quiet. You get there, you're kind of in a doubt, bit of a downer. Whereas if you were just fucking up and about, bro. It's a good point. Um, yeah, it's a bit different. I just, I don't know. I feel like having footy on for pre's is, could have been a good, bad thing. Maybe we didn't stay at pre's long enough, but I was fucked enough to just go. Like maybe we should have stayed for like another hour, but actually played games and fucking drank but i was already busted so I was like, that's ah. the thing there's too much casual drinking yeah exactly as opposed to like fun drinking yeah exactly and then, yeah so and that's my that's my favorite part yeah same that's that's the best that's why i'm saying like i feel like it was down we're sitting here watching the footy i'm like we should be playing stack cup bro we should be fucking playing king's cup we didn't even play king's cup once like the good thing is there's plenty of time in the summer summer hasn't even started to fix that oh yeah we got yeah there's a lot of good Sunday sesh times coming up, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, anyway, we get to the festival and fucking Rambo loses his wallet in, we don't know actually where. I messaged the Uber driver. No, I actually haven't checked if I got a response, but I don't think I've got a response. Um, but yeah, he lost his wallet, which for anyone who doesn't know, your wallet has your identification in it. Uh, so how do you get into a festival without your identification? It's a fucking difficult task, mate. This guy is lucky for some reason. I don't he know had a photo. Happened. No, oh. I, they they wouldn't. They don't even usually let that happen. I know, but f- at least he had a photo on his phone because I, we were thinking, now he's cooked. I thought he was fucked. I had no time for it either. I said, I don't give a fuck, bro. We're like, he's cooked. Um, and then he goes over to a bunch of different places and then he told us that he showed him the photo of his ID on his phone and the guy said, how old are you? He says, I'm 25. This is my date of birth. And they go, all right, go through. Yeah. And then another security guard tried to question it and the other guy waved him off, said, no, he's good. He's lucky Goes that he through. looks old, like that he wasn't... If we, if we were like 21, he's not getting through. Yeah. But because you're like 25... He's got a beard. you got a beard. Like you kind of... We look older now. Like yeah. you probably got a bit of a chance. Um, worst case, he could have just went and bought an under 18 ticket, but <laughs> fuck, it fuck. would have been a nightmare. Um, but yeah, absolute stinker from him. And then later in the day, we actually had a random person act as a police officer. They somehow got his phone messaged him, got on a call, and then he heard people laughing in the background, um, acting, trying to tell him, oh, yeah, we can give you back your wallet. So I think a bunch of, ran- bunch of random people have his wallet. 
I don't even. I reckon it genuinely was the cops, but it's a festival and there's like people laughing around. Like if there's a cop where you are and we're sitting here having a conversation, you're gonna hear laughing and giggling. So he probably just fucking shit himself. Not sure. Um, Either way, it's well, probably you will a never good, know. It's probably a good thing. Yeah, that he didn't get his wallet back, but you know, we will never know. Um, so that's on him to cancel all his cards and uh, get him back. Um, but yeah, after that, it was. I didn't like the setup of the festival. Awful. Didn't like set the festival. What um, are we doing? What are we doing? This I, I really, really should have just listened to me and worn jeans or pants because fuck, it was cold. It was cold. Dude. It, it was, was cold. Freezing. Um, and like I just wasn't like naturally warm from alcohol. I don't know. Just wasn't warm. No, I tell you, I tell you the issue, you, oh, ah, bro. I don't actually think it's listening. It's sort of their fault for scheduling it on a grand final day. But I'm not joking, bro. Like. I was taught like a few people message me and shit. Oh, come, come over, like party with us after. They, um, hundreds of people that I know didn't go to the festival and just decided to have grand final day at their house. Like what we were doing here, but just stayed and partied and kicked on. I which what we should have fucking yeah, done. Yeah. Um, and that I know for a fact and p- listen out weren't too happy with us, but the, the 16 plus thing, massive, massive, massive deterrent for fucking 18 year olds and over 18s to not want to go to the festival i mean it was only reason i went and i think i got clouded is because of mr fucking summer if they didn't have john summer on that fucking board i think that festival would have folded yeah big time um because he had the biggest crowd there bro oh he was probably the only act i actually was like fuck that was great (laughs) yeah he he was great but you know what um when we see him next year because he will be at tomorrowland yeah um Fuck, it is going to be so much better. Yeah. Because, yeah, I just didn't feel comfortable being there. It felt like we didn't get packed into a crowd anywhere. Um, like, we went to... I mean, we can run down the... We literally got there. We went to a DJ called Conductor on, like, this hell small stage. And it was in a car park. Car park. <laughs> uneven ground. Yeah. Curb. Fucking not very many people there. The speakers weren't very loud. Like... Ah, it was, it was not great. No offense. Like, I don't want to shit on this now too much. No, like, we love the festival. That stage this wasn't... feedback. Yeah, it wasn't great, that that stage. And if I was giving advice, let's not do that setup again because it was awful. Let's go back to the old way. It was fucking way better. Um, But yeah, we went there and then um, the next DJ was starting was Cassian who did not have... Because Skepta started half or like 25 minutes after Cassian. So everyone was already at Skepta. I wanted to watch Cassian for a bit, but then the thing with that was basically there was no crowd at Cassian really. So the poor guy's basically playing a fucking a small crowd. So when you don't when you're not packed into a crowd, you don't get that festival energy and atmosphere. You feel like you're being watched. And that's when you don't fucking you, you just kind of stand there and watch. Um yeah. so then we left that, went to Pierce, went to Skepta. Skepta had a big crowd. Um I wasn't the biggest fan. Obviously, it ain't safe and like no security and shit. Like the three, four songs that are fucking elite, like went off. But this is the thing though, Ev. Like he was at 6.45. At that time, I should be up and about. Yeah. And I wasn't because of what had happened prior. Yeah, but that's because it's just dead, bro. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like I've I've enjoyed Skepta before at that exact, like at different festivals. Um, I mean, I don't like like rappers. (laughs) Just because of the, the, how the, the earlier part of the day went so yeah i just don't like rappers at festivals i think they're shit no well we didn't we didn't even see 21 even though they scheduled the times different um johnny summit came on after skepta and yeah he was fantastic elite bro uh, and and you know what's fucked even andrew who's a big rap fan he literally goes to me like oh yeah this is fucking this is this is Good. this is the stuff yeah because, and I said, bro, this is what I've been trying to tell all of you fuckwits for so long, bro. No one likes rappers, bro. They fucking are not... You, you might know two or three songs. Unless it's a fucking Travis Scott where well, the energy's insane. Yeah. Bro, you need... It's just basic fucking science, bro. You need the beat, the 128 BPMs, fucking the baseline feeling in my heart, bro, where I'm just like, oh, fuck. The euphoric songs, which John Summer has. He had the fucking hard techno, the mix with the techno, the mix with the euphoric songs that he has. Everyone's singing along. Everyone looked happy for that an hour. (laughs) 
And then fucking, I was like, I said to, I said to you boys, I said, I didn't give a fuck if you go to 21. I'm not going. I said, I'm staying at Subfocus right here because I can't deal with another rapper. Yeah. Well, after what we had experienced, we were like, yeah, we're staying. <laughs> I'm, I'm not fucking going. Uh, and then we didn't even really stay for Subfocus. We, we basically stayed for maybe 10 minutes. Yeah. And then I was like, I was so checked out, bro. I was like... I think we all were, bro. We all just stood there and we're like, if we stay trying to get out with all these people, uh, fuck that. Oh, I said to, so I said to Zach, I said, oh, Zach, I'm going to get an Uber because I was looking at Ubers to check prices and it was decent. It was like 40 bucks. I was like, oh, I'm going to probably order an Uber if you want to jump in mine. And then he was like, he thought I said something different. He was like, oh, nah. And I was like, oh, fuck, he must be loving it. <laughs> and then uh, I was, and then he turned around like two seconds later. He was like, oh, did you say like you're going to go um, now? And I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm fucking, he's like, I'm jumping in that shit. Then I told you. Um, and then Andy, apparently he'd already told Zach he's leaving. Um, and there was just Rambo. And then Rambo the was one. like, yeah. Uh, and then so we all just, we just left at like 9.20. I think it was like 9.20. Festival finished at 10. Thank God we did. Because we walked, we beat the crowd, and somehow we secured a $38 Uber, which was absolutely fucked, bro, getting a ride. like It was. We were asking cabs. Like, I was think, so I, I was saying to the casino, which is about a 30-minute drive, I said, bro, I'll give you fucking, I think we started at like 70 bucks. 70 bucks. They laughed at us. They're not even like giving us a rebuttal. No, not, I was <laughs> like, how, how much then? 120 What? 120 bruv criminal man and bear in mind it was 920 i thought fuck mate if you just got your shit together you could fucking get us you could be back you could be back here mate you'd be back here at 10 20 there'll be a fucking ride you can charge them 200 bucks instead of sitting here because bro one of them gave me attitude i was like oh i can get an uber for 60 i was yeah. lying but he was like get an uber then <laughs> i was like i fucking will bruv <laughs> like yeah i got one for 40 dollars you twat yeah it wasn't um that was not a fun experience. In the grand scheme of things, we didn't actually walk too far. No. Um, to to get the eventual Uber, um, so it felt fine. Um, thankfully, Rambo and Corrigan, yeah, Rambo and Corrigan, they ended up getting one themselves. Um, so they got home safely. We got back here. And then, yeah, that was pretty much it, bro. That was pretty much it. Um, do, do we give it a rating? <laughs> Do we give it a rating? Oh, I don't um, have another right here, please, bro. I no idea. I don't know if this has been ongoing, man. I think we should just, just keep going, bro. I don't know. I don't think it fucks the audio. This thing's a piece of shit, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think... Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're back and going. I think we're fine. It's probably been going on a fucking old day. Um, but, yeah, we can give the festival a rating. I mean... The grand final, I actually had a good time here. Like, it was great. I would have loved to have... Because we've done a grand final like this before at, at my house um, where we didn't actually go out after. Everyone left pretty early because we had to listen out the next day. Yeah. But where we just watched the GF, ate food, food was there and we just partied, bro. So I think if we had done that, we, had, we would have had a great day, bro. No, if we... If we could have just kept drinking, it would have been around seven o'clock. We would have been fucking paralyzed, all of us. Yeah. And then you just die, watch the fucking prem. Yeah, exactly. And then we could have just like literally just maybe ordered some more food or whatever. Yeah. Just died on the couches. <coughs> oh, fuck, I almost dropped that. Um, died on the couches. And then everyone got, would have gone home around fucking nine o'clock anyway, I reckon, at the latest. Yeah. Um, would have been a much more enjoyable experience in my mind. But the, yeah, if I was giving the festival a rating without being a Debbie Downer, I genuinely wouldn't even give it... I think I gave it a four when I gave it to some people I ended up partying with later that night. I'll give it a... Oh, I'll give it I'll give it a five. I'll give it a five. You're giving it a pass. Oh, it's just a generous pass. Fuck, that's a generous, all that right. Too bad, bro. Mate, the only reason it gets a four and all four of those points come from John Summer. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking... Yeah. I mean, I suppose... Yeah. I don't know. The weather really wasn't a massive factor. Like, it was shit, but it wasn't a massive factor. No. It was the... It was under 18s. Oh, there was kids, bro. We was, didn't even talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Fucking hell. We were in John Summit and I literally looked over... There was like... 
oh, a group of maybe three or four girls, and they were they were trying actively to dance in our direction, bro. Yeah. Fucking trying to put her ass into me cock and shit. And I'm like, I literally turned to fucking, I don't know, I think it might have been you. I was like, bro, these chicks are like 12. <laughs> like, yeah. like, what the fuck, bro? We got to like get me the fuck out of here. Yeah, it, it just, I just didn't feel comfortable whatsoever. That That was a massive... Massive red flag, bro. Like, just don't do that again. Yeah, don't do that again. Do not do that again. I, I don't know if they will next year. Well, uh, see, this is where I think that they're going to get in two minds because on paper, they're going to be like, oh, we needed the ticket sales. But like we said, when they announced that that's what they were doing, the problem when you do that is you're now getting rid of the people like us and our age group who were going to go, but now don't. So you're basically replacing it with 16-year-olds who can't buy drinks yeah i don't know yeah it's it's dodgy so a lot of factors i mean firstly let us know what you guys thought if you went yeah and let us know if you went in other states as well if you went to the to the victoria one the new south wales one i don't know if there's one in brisbane i assume there would have been um adelaide let us know let us know what you thought maybe it was better i seriously think if they didn't put it on grand final day a lot more people would have gone I think so too. Like the 18 plus thing was obviously a big deal, but... It's why like, yeah. bro, I don't know how the scheduling works and everything, but do it in fucking... I mean, maybe not this year because Sydney were in the grand final, but do it in New South Wales on grand final day, bro. Well, that's what they usually do. Who gives a fuck, bro? They don't care. Yeah, they don't care. 90% of New South Wales does not care about the AFL grand final. Why would you put it yeah. in WA on the grand final when that is literally... Everyone's watching. And it's very... Uh, like... It kind of worked well being early in a way that we were able to still go to this now, but it makes the day big, bro. Well, like, it makes the day big. Well, if AFL, um, if what they're doing for next year's grand final where it starts at 3.30, we wouldn't have gone to the festival. No, 100% not. I'm, I'm not missing a grand final. No way. Um, you would have to literally give me an all-star lineup for me to miss a grand final. And even then, it'd be pushing it. Yeah, you'd have to be having Garrick's, bro, somewhere. Yeah. And even then, I'd probably just go to Garrick's, but... Anyway, yeah, that was a festival. Not great for me. I, I, I really didn't have that great of a time. And then I, I ended up at like this little mini kick-ons. Ah, oh, fuck me, bro. I, and then I was... Can you tell us why you died? I don't know, bro. Because... I, because I didn't drink anymore. I didn't do any more anything. I just basically was drinking waters at the kick-ons, just dancing in the fucking living room. And then... It was like 1.30. I was like, oh, I started to feel real like just a bit sick in the stomach. My head was fucking started thumping. I was like, oh, I got to go. I'm like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, oh, God, fucking, I got to go. The minute I get outside, like I'm stumbling outside, bro, like trying to get out the door, like fucking open this gate, bro. I get out, instantly throw up my guts in the fucking car park next to the house. Like, oh my God, I was just yakking. Uber was on the way. Thank God it was five minutes because I was yakking for five minutes, bro, just spitting. Like, this is when I knew I didn't care. So, I had, like, gray, gray trackies on and a hoodie. And I just was starting to, like, just spit, like, down my own jumper. Oh because I didn't God, give up. I was like, I just need to get home. I'll wash this shit tomorrow. I was like, just fucking, like, grabbing my head, fucking sitting on the ground, just spitting on my jumper. Like, my burks are covered in fucking vomit and shit. Were you just hating yourself, bro? Oh, mate. Oh, I was, I was only, like, six minutes away from my house. And I was like... In, the, tears, in the Uber, just hunched, bro. My fucking head is pounding. I get home, straight up the stairs, mum's shower, fetal position. It's a big, my mum's shower is bigger. So I was just laying in the fetal position, just like mini throw up, spit down the drain for like 30 minutes, just fucking dying. And then the water went cold, so I had to get out. Uh, well, that I, would have been miserable if I, it went cold on you. Yeah, I fell asleep for 40 minutes. Dog woke me up. So I then I get up. As soon as I stand up, head spins oh straight to God, the toilet. Man. I'm sitting around hugging the toilet bowl, just yakking my fucking... There's nothing there, bro. It's just stomach acid and I'm just yakking again. My head's fucking pounding. Shower <laughs> again. I, I'm not even joking. I was in the... Dre- I, was, I thought it was the end, bro. I said, fuck, man. I'm praying to God. I'm not even a religious man. I start praying to God, bro. Um, bro, because I probably went to bed... Like 
one thirty two. Yeah, this is about three a.m. now. Yeah, I probably went to bed like one thirty two, and like I'd stayed up until then. Yeah, and not once did I feel like that, bro. Yeah, that was the same until about one forty five a.m., bro. And then when I got in the, but yeah, for about three hours, I was just in that same phase: toilet, yaks. Like you must have had a considerable amount more than I did that day. Because I, don't know. I the, think it's just, bro, the state you were in is crazy. Yeah, like, it came so out of nowhere. Like I'm bro. still so surprised. Like I remember we got back here and we're all just chilling, bro. Yeah, I was fine. We're all fine. I was fine at the afters, just dancing too. I was fine. We're all fine. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't even eat or drink anything else either. Something must have just kicked in my stomach. It was like fucking get this shit out of me. You, literally, you were just a demon was coming out of you. Yeah, and then yeah, so I fucking yeah, I woke. The good thing was I woke up at like. 8 a.m. the next morning after going to bed at like 4. So I slept for like four good hours after like all of those fucking yak sessions. And I woke up and I didn't really have much of a headache or anything. I was just like, thank God I had that last night because today I feel all right. Did you prep? Yeah. Well, oh yeah. I was The first yak in the car park was just hydrolite. Yeah. So that it was that color like of hydrolite. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fucking not good. But. Or alive. Yeah, Sunday um, obviously came around and it was very much a um, just a quiet day. I did a bit of cleaning. I cleaned my room, washed my sheets, um, I dusted, I vacuumed and I thank God because later that night I felt great. Yeah. I fucking I, felt great. I had a candle going, bro. I had to clean all this shit. Yeah, you poor bastard. Um, that's one thing we really didn't do, which we usually do. Before we leave a place... Um, and it's always really this place. We usually clean, but I don't know what happened. I mean, probably because we were consumed on the on the grand final. Yeah. We just did no cleaning up, right? I mean, we put a lot of empties away, but... No, nah, it wasn't too bad. Someone was this. disgustingly half-sipping drinks <laughs> and leaving them. Yeah. That, we don't know who. We've got we've got an idea. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Sunday, we're just playing video games, bro. Just playing yeah. video games together. Um, yeah, watching shows, fucking talking shit. And it was... Probably a good, good way to spend the day. Yeah, it was good. It was much needed. Good um, way to spend the day. How's, yeah. how's your week looking ahead? It's a pretty quiet week, bro. Yeah? Which is nice. Yeah. I don't know. My parents come back from Bali, so fucking... When do they come back? I should have known, man. Sometime this week, I think. Um, let's but do yeah. the Spotify playlist before we head off. Do I have any new songs? I really couldn't tell you, bro. I really couldn't tell you. Let me. Oh, yeah, I've got, I've got one song. I'm only going to do one song this week. Uh, bittersweet symphony, that old banger. Get that in there. What would you like, mate? Uh, I'll do "Pumping" by Chris Stussy. Pumping by Chris. There it is. And then I'll do a song called "Follow the Sun" by Xavier Rudd. No worries. That is in the PNC Lads weekly playlist. Shout outs to all the people we saw at Listen Out. There was actually a decent amount, which was good. Yeah. Always love chatting to you. Um, that's pretty much it. Appreciate you tuning in. Rate it five stars. Hope you have a great week ahead. Peace. Peace.